Welcome to a series called The Book of Enoch, where we're going through the Book of Enoch verse by verse to see what it is that it would be like in the days of Noah, because uh, the end times will be like the days of Noah, and Enoch had great insight into it, as well as Jude quoted the prophecy of Enoch, and Jesus referred to the prophecy of Enoch. So I, I, I think it's important to understand. I, I'm not saying it belongs in the Bible. I'm not saying it doesn't. What I'm saying is I definitely want to understand it. So where we are is uh, the watchers have fallen, uh, well, 200 of them and laying with women. Uh, and then they gave rise to a race of Nephilim. And then they uh, taught them the secrets of the universe, how to make weapons, jewelry, the stars, the moons, uh, really anything that you need to know about profiting and controlling the world, whether by force or financial or by sexual means. And as a result, they mutilated mankind. Uh, they enslaved mankind. When mankind couldn't keep up, they uh, ate mankind. So uh, that's where we are. And, and um, God is saying that, that he's going to destroy the watchers, uh, destroy the earth and wipe all of unrighteousness from the face of the earth through Noah. Um, and that's where we're at now. So we're just going to pick it up in Enoch 10, starting verse 29. And cleanse thou the earth from all oppression and from all unrighteousness and from all sin and from all ungodliness and all the uncleanness that is wrought upon the earth, destroy from off the earth. And all the children of men shall become righteous and all nations shall offer adoration and shall praise me and all shall worship me. And the earth shall be cleansed from all defilement and from all sin and from all punishment and from all torment. And I will never again send them upon it from generation to generation and forever. In those days, I will open the store chambers of blessings, which are in heaven, so as to send them down upon earth, the earth over the work and labor of the children of men. And truth and peace shall be associated together throughout all the days of the world and throughout all the generations of men. All right, I'm going to pause there real quick. Um, because what he's referring to is after all this takes place, what will the world be like? And the intentions are to wipe evil off the face of the earth. However, as long as sin and death is in the world, it's always going to be there. So what God is saying here is that he will never again do this. Uh, he will never again allow this to happen. But beyond that, he will open the store chambers of blessing, which are in heaven, so as to send them down upon the earth over the work and labor of the children of men. Now, this is pretty critical because as we labor, as we do things in the world, um, it's important that when you're doing it unto the Lord, um, that this still applies because it's all generations of men. We're living in a generation of men that uh, this applies to us. Um, so it's very important that when you give your labor to the Lord, he's going to bless the heck out of it. And this is his promise, even way back then, that this is what the world will be like. And truth and peace shall be associated together throughout all the days of the world and throughout all the generations of men. So truth and peace will be associated together. Uh, however, we don't see truth and we don't see peace on a regular basis. But generally as a whole, most men will see truth and peace. Um, I think if you took a thousand humans and you kind of asked them to kind of define truth and peace and really understand what they stand for and maybe ask them a series of questions about truth and peace and where they stand, I would say most people are aligned with godly truth and peace. Uh, where they falter is sin and they get tempted and they do other things that have nothing to do with truth and peace. Uh, but that's how the world works. It's still there. Just because you deny it doesn't mean it's not there. So in the end, what God is saying here is that there's going to be a rise, you know, when he destroys the world. Like if you were to see the days of Noah, it would have been massive, brutal destruction. Uh, blood and death and eating men and drinking their blood is what it says. And uh, just mutilating mankind, enslaving mankind. I couldn't even imagine what it must have looked like. Um, and we haven't had anything like that since. So, and that's the real thing what God is saying is that he's wiping that off the face of the earth. And even though there's sin and death in the world, it's, it's definitely truth and peace as a whole up until, you know, when we get to the end times really reigns. Um, you know, that's why most people 
have this temptation to do terrible things. And they're only being withheld by the rule of law. Uh, you take out the rule of law and people start eating people and raping people and mutilating people like that. Uh, it wouldn't take long. So uh, there you go. Right now, what we're looking at is truth and peace reign. Any thoughts or insight, put it below.